Hey crafty friends, this is Chelsea. Today I'm so excited to share with you the new Dream Maker collection from Close to My Heart. It's a beautiful collection and it is this special for National Scrapbooking Month. And uh, I'm gonna walk you through it real quick and then we're gonna jump into a project and make a layout with this collection. So there is a sticker sheet. You can see the beautiful gold foil that's on there. This has a very like painterly watercolor feel to it. The whole collection has some really unique patterns. I think this is probably one of my favorite ones right here. It's just so beautiful. Really pretty colors, basically like a rainbow of colors in this collection. And lots of very artsy finishes. It looks like it's been sponge painted, uh, water colored. There's just some really nice patterns and effects on the pattern paper. Love this different take on a rainbow stripe and there's splatter down at the bottom, which is really beautiful. And patterns were just kind of like fades in and out, pretty much ready-made backgrounds that you can build a layout on top of more bold patterns, more subtle patterns. There's a really good mix. And because there's so many different colors in here, I think it'd be really easy to find photos to go with this paper. This is another favorite. It's gorgeous with the subtle text in the background. It looks like there's been like painted, kind of like acrylic paint painted on there. This looks very watercolory. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Another version of a rainbow stripe and a, kind of a watercolor speckle look on this one, also in a rainbow color palette. So you can see what I mean, the papers are gorgeous. And then besides the paper pack and sticker sheet, there's also a stamp set. This is a double stamp set. So on one side we have all these words, which will work great for layouts as well as some sentiments for cards. And then over here we have some nice texture elements. I really love this one, how the text is uneven, it's kind of blurred out in certain areas. And if you like the look of mixed media and watercolor, but you don't want to get messy, it's a great way to achieve that. And then we have some florals in here as well, some script. So a really good stamp set that I can see going back and reaching for this over and over again. Then we have some paperboard pieces. So let's see if I can hold this so you can see there's leaves and uh, circles, dragonflies, this beautiful large rose arrows, stars, bit this big word that says lovely. So really usable pieces on the paperboard and that is like a thin chipboard. Now I almost forgot there is more paper in this collection and this is the cardstock pack. So you have the lighter version of the color on this side and on this side you have this beautiful pattern. Basically, it looks like you've taken watercolors and dropped them into water and then photographed the patterns that that makes. So each one is unique. We have Ballerina, which is quite a light pink. You can see they're all just a little bit different. So beautiful. So you do have the solid side that you can use if you don't want more pattern, uh, but I love this kind of soft watercolor look. And then the final element in this collection is the stencil. So there, this is 12 by 12 stencil and there are four quadrants. Uh, so I think what I'll probably end up doing is cutting these apart because that's how I like to use these sorts of stencils and have little like six by six stencils. So super usable texture elements that you could add in to make it a little bit more mixed media, either with ink or texture paste or mist or whatever you want to use. So there is a look at the full collection. I will have that linked down below in the description. Now let's jump into making a layout. 
I think choosing paper is the hardest part of this process, but I had this really cute photo of my daughter which perfectly matched these colors. I want to do several layers of paper behind the photo, so I'm going to start off with that kind of soft watercolor pattern. And then I'm going to add a little bit busier of a pattern, still pulling colors from the layout with those yellow and teal and blue tones. And then one more softer pattern. So I'm trying to not overwhelm this layout with too busy of patterns. Basically, I only have one busy layer and then my base layer is fairly busy as well. I feel like I need a little bit of definition in between my photo and that first layer. So I'm gonna add a very thin border of white cardstock. I like how this gives my photo some nice definition and it doesn't just blend into the paper behind it. So a couple things that I'm doing on here to help all these layers not overwhelm my page is I am sticking with the same color palette. I'm not using high contrasting colors and also I'm limiting how much busy pattern paper I'm using. So that way I have these kind of softer patterns breaking up the busier pattern and it gives your eye somewhere to rest. If I introduced a lot of different colors here, it would make this feel a lot busier and maybe a little bit overwhelming. I'm using my edge distressing tool just to rough up the edges. If you don't have one of these, uh, they're retired, Close My Heart doesn't carry them anymore, but if you don't have one of these, you could definitely use the blade of your scissors to do the same sort of thing. You could also choose to ink the edges instead to help define the edges of each of those layers. Now that I have my paper figured out, I'm gonna move on to embellishing. So what I've done here is on the Cricut, I used the Hello Darling new SVG collection to cut these flowers. I did the outlines in white daisy and then I did the base layer in vellum. As soon as I saw this collection I thought I want to use vellum flowers because it doesn't add any extra color. It leaves it feeling nice and airy and you can see all the really pretty colors of the papers through your flowers. It's a really easy way to add layers and detail to the page without making it heavy or adding a ton of color. So you know I had to try and find a way to use this beautiful stamp set on my layout. The background is beautiful, it really doesn't need anything, but I wanted to use the stamp set so I pulled in some mink ink and I'm just testing out behind my photo to see what it's gonna look like. I thought maybe I'd wanna go with a darker gray but uh, I like the mink and it's enough to add a little bit of texture, a little something extra to the background while still keeping it in the background. I think I wanna add several different things to this background and the key with doing that is to stick with a color palette, stick with you know kind of the colors I already have going on in the layout and neutrals and not going too dark. I think if I go too dark, it's gonna draw all your attention to the background and that's not where I want the attention. I want it to be on the photo, on the embellishments, on the story, and the background needs to fade into the background. This dot stencil from the collection is the perfect addition to the background because we have different sized dots and they kind of fade in and out naturally. I'm using Lagoon ink and a mini ink blending tool I want the ink to be the darkest next to my photo and then kind of blend outwards and disappear. I'm not doing it evenly in squares. I'm kind of moving it around and just kind of doing little patches here and there, trying to keep the darker ink towards my photo and lighter as it gets farther away. I'm leaving gaps. I am not, you know, doing a complete border all the way around my photo. I'm really concentrating all of the stamping, stenciling, everything in that top left and the bottom right because that is around where my embellishments are gonna be, my flowers, and these elements should just kind of poke out from behind that. If you're enjoying this video so far, I'd appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up. It really helps out my channel. I am debating if this should be my last layer or if I should add something else. There's so many nice, images on this stamp set uh, that I was like, well, maybe I'll try and use one more. So I grabbed pewter ink 
because I wasn't sure what color I'd want to use. And I saw that I needed the foam side of my Versa mat to get a good impression with this stamp. So I flipped it over. I was like, you know what? I think it's gonna be too bold. So I grab my Periwinkle ink and I'm gonna test it out again. I'm like, yeah, that's a lot softer. And if I don't like it with the Periwinkle, I could always stamp over top with the pewter ink. And I think that is just bold enough. You can definitely see it, definitely stands out on the background, but it's still within the color palette of this paper. So it's not gonna become a focal point. Uh, if I wanted to have a grungier layout, I would have gone for a darker color, like the pewter. But I wanted this to stay soft and pretty and spring-like and still going with the feeling of my page of being light and airy. As I'm adhering all of my paper layers together on my photo mat and then adhering that to my page, I'm keeping the adhesive away from the edges because I knew that I was going to want to tuck things underneath. I think that's a really fun thing to do when you have lots of layers is to tuck your embellishments under different layers. So you can really see it with this top bunch of flowers because all the pieces are individual. I'm just going to tuck under even the leaves are on separate layers and it just makes it more interesting to look at, kind of integrates it with the paper layers. And because these flowers are see-through basically, I didn't want the ends of the leaves showing through the clear parts of my flowers. So by tucking them under the paper layers, that really helped to keep the flowers looking really pretty. And of course, if you're not using vellum flowers, then you could adhere everything wherever it wouldn't really matter because you wouldn't be seeing it through there. It's one thing I love about using my Cricut and the SVG collections that coordinate with all the paper collections is there is so many opportunities to do different things and customize your projects. Before I commit to gluing these flowers down I realize that I want to add a little bit more stenciling there and also I must have shifted my photo mat slightly when I stuck it down because that periwinkle stamping along the side kind of disappeared. So I must have gotten it shifted over slightly. I'm gonna grab my paper crafting tool. This thing works great for pulling up mistakes, kind of breaking that adhesive bond so that you can get in there and add things or tuck things under. I'm just gonna use it to pry up my photo mat so that I can do a little bit more stamping with that solid stamp. I just wanna bring it out a little bit farther. It kind of disappeared on me. Same thing here at the bottom. I didn't know how far out I wanted my floral cluster to go, so it ended up being out a little bit farther than I had thought. And when that happens, you kind of cover up some of your stamping because when you're stamping, you're just kind of guessing. I'm also wanting some more of that periwinkle on this edge of the flower. So I did a couple of test stamps. I was a little bit nervous to put it in there, but I'm glad I did. It needed that little bit of punch of color under there. And now I'm gonna commit and actually stick this down. So I'm just using little dots of liquid glue all around. I'm not sticking down everything, but just little dots here and there will be enough to hold this in place. I'm not planning on layering anything underneath of it, so I can just go ahead and hold that in place until it tacks up a little bit. This piece here is from the sticker sheet and I'm just attaching it with some foam tape so it pops up a little bit. And then some more stickers here. This heart is so beautiful. It has gold foil striping on it. And then there's some other like solid gold foil heart stickers. So I'm gonna sprinkle those on my page as well. But before I get any farther, I wanna make sure I get my journaling on here. So my go-to tea ruler pencil lines, and then I just wrote in my journaling. I didn't really have a big story for this page, just basically journal about how we have so much fun in the summertime together, and going on little adventures in our backyard and around our town. Really, Isabella is so laid back and she's always up for some kind of adventure. So I do have more photos from this day. I might do a coordinating page at some point. Uh, I didn't want to overwhelm this page because the more photos you add, the busier your page gets. So I knew I wanted to add a lot of layers and I was worried that if I added too many photos, the page would just become overwhelmed. Now, final touch, I do 
debated whether I wanted to add splatter, but I decided to go for it. This is the turquoise gloss spray. I love how this stuff dries shiny. So you kind of have like glossy little dots. And I decided to go for a color that was pretty close to the page color. So it's definitely there. You can definitely see it, but it's not taking away. It does kind of fade into the background. I had been thinking about using the gold one, but it was kind of a different shade of gold than the hearts. So I went for the turquoise and I'm really glad that I did. I added quite a bit and I'm just using the printer paper to mask off my photo so I didn't get any splatter on it. And this is how it turned out. Oh, this makes me so happy. I love all that interesting texture in the background. I love that some of that is actually printed right on the paper and I didn't have to do anything for it. And then all my other little layers that I added on here, that nice hit of the gold foil, really makes for a special layout. I hope you enjoyed watching this come together and that you got some ideas for layering on your own pages. If you want to see some more process videos, you can watch this playlist here on the screen and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.